How you all? Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. We are the official home or uh, for our good friends at Walk On, official sports bar of the Moon Graffon Show, and it's a place for families to enjoy. Like Drew Brees says, I invested in this because it's a place I could take my kids. Walk Ons. You're going to enjoy the fun at Walk Ons and the food. All right, Lance Harris, Representative Lance Harris, joins us. Uh, I, Lance, by the way, but first question before we even get to uh, uh, what happened yesterday. And by the way, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, well, I, I, question. Uh, anybody ever come up to you and say, Lance, I want you to raise my income taxes? I, I just think that if you raise our taxes, that uh, I would love to pay some more taxes. And if you just raise our taxes up, I'll vote for you and I'll continue to vote for you. Anybody ever come up to you and tell you that at all in your political life? I can say it's never <laughs> happened, not one time. <laughs> hey, boy, but I tell you what, if you read a Jim Bean piece, a Gannett piece, or advocate piece, you would think everybody is running up to y'all, please raise my taxes. I want to contribute more. And that's what, if you read the articles, that's what they make you believe, think you, uh, people are telling y'all. You would think. I mean, but uh, let me tell you, when I come home to my district and, and, and when I check my emails, when people call me, it's everybody is saying, hold the line on spending. Yeah. Let's do something different. Let's let's get control of this spending before we even talk about redoing the tax structure and bringing in. Let me let me ask another question. I, and I know you're a Republican, but you, has any Democrat Party member come up to you in their district and said, my district is begging to pay more taxes? Anybody as a Democrat said, man, I got people over here willing to take home less money uh, for the cause. Any Democrat ever come up to you? I don't even think they come up to you and say to tell you that, but maybe they do. No, they haven't done that. They might come up and say we need to tax business more, but yeah. uh, you know, or rich people. But they never come up to me and say my my constituents want more yeah. tax. I, I didn't think so, and that kind of set the narrative. I I got to tell you, I had the the ripping reds yesterday when I saw what about nine or ten Republicans went with the Democrats. Here y'all are. You ran a good fight. And by the way, I'm gonna praise you. And Cameron Henry and Taylor Barra and all the delegation of Republicans, the 50 that held together to say enough's enough. I want to say it again. I want to thank y'all. I, 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 the ones that voted right, I, I really do. And if we knew we were going to have some turncoats, my word, not yours. I now know what Edwards for Republicans for Edwards meant when they put them signs up. Well, why didn't they just do it in a regular session? Y'all could be home, vacation, maybe going back to your job. Why not just do it then? Why put y'all through this? Well, I don't know, Moon. I think that's the way the process works. What, the, you know, uh, I'm so proud of our speaker, Taylor Barra. He did kept, great. He, he, man, he did a good job with the House because those last few hours uh, in the House on Thursday, the senators came over, Karen Carter-Peterson, the head of the Louisiana Democratic uh, Party, Cussing our members. But, but, but look, can I stop you right there? You make yes. up a great comes over cussing our cursing our members, and we got Republicans after getting cursed with f bombs running over there and voting with them. That's the part I don't understand. That's the part I got a problem with. Well, you know that's how the process works, and and I got to say I'm proud of our our delegation. The you know 51 of them stuck together. Had Cameron been in the house yesterday, uh, as we go through this, I mean it's it, it's amazing that we're able to get this far with all the things that were coming at us and, and being promised, being done. And it's absolutely a testament to the fact that the state of Louisiana is tired of spending more money than we have coming in. Moon, let me just give you an example. Yes, sir. Yesterday in, in, in the debate, I brought up to, to Walt Leger on the floor. Since 2009, now get this, the RC has been wrong, and we've talked about that before. Absolutely. But since 2009, we have had $3.4 billion in mid-year cuts. Think about that. An average of $400 million per year. That's amazing. We wanted to go with a standstill budget of uh, March 1st existing, which is $300 million less than what the REC projection is, because we know the track record is clear. History is clear. Since 2009, we've averaged $400 million per year in mid-year cuts. Wow. Amazing and, by, and by the way, let me ask this question off of that. Aren't you expecting mid-year budget cuts again? 
Uh, I, I fully expect it. I mean, uh, history history uh, repeats itself over and over if you keep doing the same thing. Well, we did the I same the, thing. We did exactly yeah. the same. And by the way, our economy was deemed second worst in the country. Our unemployment's third highest in the country. Where are they going to get the money from? Hi. And that's what – go ahead and comment on that first because then I want to get into the sales tax deal, this temporary tax, which I hope we don't lose that as well. Right. Well, I tell you, think about this, and this is what the citizens need to realize. In 2018 budget, which was voted out of the House yesterday, and this was I brought this up to uh, Representative Leger on the floor, oil is projected at $51 a barrel. You know what it was going for yesterday at a low point? What, 44? 44. Yeah, I saw that. So look, that's right there. That is about $80 million that's coming coming out, coming out of that REC projection if oil stays low, and I don't see any indication that it's going up. So we have all of these different signs telling us this projection might not happen. By the way, Lance, think about it. If you had any common sense on the Senate side and these House members that voted that way, wouldn't you base it on 44 because that's what it is now? Uh, What if if it's 39? Yeah, I mean, we're what if it, uh, you see what I'm saying? What if it's 39? Yeah, if it's 39, you're going to have a, a huge adjustment coming. And so that was what this whole discussion is about, is we have now spent $300 million more million, 3.3% higher than March existing. What we're spending in this day right okay. now, this fiscal session that ends June the 30th, we're spending three hundred million more dollars starting July the first. Okay, let me ask now, this question. There was a little caveat thrown in there. Well, we're gonna try to hold a, the line on sixty million. What the hell is that? Well, that that uh, and, and in my opinion, that with the amendment that um, Representative Haver got on, it's not worth the ink it's written on. No, that's a Republican. I want people to be point out he's one of the ones that left us. But go ahead. Well, now I'm talking about his amendment. Now I'm not talking about the member, but I voted against that amendment because it had no teeth in it. It directs the the Jay Darden to hold back. Oh the, my God, Jay, Jay was going to get with y'all on all those contracts. Uh, how's that going? Well, uh, we haven't gotten the latest report in a while. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Jay Darden, Jay Darden, Jay Darden doesn't get anything done. I, that's my comment. It's not yours. I just, I, it's just very frustrating to watch the hard work that those 50 Republicans put into this. They put it in. You were beat up by Jim Bean, Tyler Bridges, the Advocate, the Gannett newspaper, the NOLA.com. You beat up by all the entities that are begging for more money, even though they already had mega increases. You know, you beat up by a lot of people, and uh, I mean, you had increases like fourteen point eight percent increase in health care, fourteen point eight percent increase, and they cried. You know, and the, uh, it just it, it blows my mind. But y'all had yeah. to fight for it, stuck together. But in my opinion, there was a few turncoats, and it it really cost what I thought was a heck of a job. Y'all did a heck of a job. I'm I'm commending all the people that stuck with y'all, including including people that I, w- I was jumping on early in the session for voting for taxes when, in the special session. They they stuck with y'all. Yeah, I tell you, that freshman class, uh, uh, you know, down around your area, they they hard with us, and I'm very proud of them. Yeah, and Lafayette, area, Lafayette area in the House stood with y'all 100%. Oh, yeah. And look, Moon, we have accomplished something. I tell you, I was in New Orleans over the weekend, and – the uh, TV stations were reporting instead of saying that the Republicans want 100 million in cuts or 300 million in cuts, we have changed the conversation. They're now saying the Republicans in the House want to not spend 300 million of the estimated revenue. I That's a, a huge leap. I make a prediction. The press probably won't say a whole lot, but I will. If we got another two, three hundred, four hundred million dollar within 300 million dollar uh, problem. With the budget and have mid year budget cuts, it ain't on the 50. It's on the 53 that voted for it. Mm-hmm. And the Senate, because the Senate seems to go along with Mr. Larry or whatever he wants. And, and, and that, that's, that was the whole debate was we think there's going to be a mid year cut. Plus, just look at the fiscal cliff coming. They like to call it that. It's a shortfall, but that would have gone a long way to, to closing that gap. And if you close that fiscal cliff gap and you do it through spending, that means there that it takes the argument for more revenue out or a whole lot more revenue. And and so now we're going to be looking at um, a much larger fiscal cliff, and the administration is going to say, "I need more revenue." I, need oh, yeah, more I know, revenue. I know that's coming. Hey, let's yeah. do this. Can you can you hang with me one more segment? 
I can. Okay, because I want to get back and talk about the sales tax that goes off the books in July. This is one we can't lose either. Either keep the sales tax or don't don't put it on the income tax. But I, just, I got a bad feeling that Larry and Edwards, with the help of these Republicans, are going to get that. And I want you to talk about that and address it. Anyway, Lance Harris, Representative Lance Harris, one of the true patriots down in Baton Rouge this past session. We'll take a break. Be right back. Hi, y'all. All. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hicks has a hotline if you'd like to be part of the Moon Graffon Show. We've got Representative Lance Harris joining us, one of the true guys that really fought fought off the press, fought off the entities that want even more money, fought off the Democrats, and, and, and uh, we ended up getting beat in the, in the special session. But I, I'm glad you're proud of them. You ought to be. I'm just well, now, Moon, Moon, I'm going to tell you, we're not beat yet because the process is not over. If the Senate makes changes to HB1, it has to come back for concurrence. And they better, what, have all their, they better have all their butts in the seats. That's I, all I got to say because my side is very resolved about this, and I think uh, I'm talking about my side as a conservative. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they better be ready for a fight if it comes back on concurrence well, uh, this weekend. I'm going to tell you right now. I'll take that bet. <laughs> <laughs> you got a Larry over there. He don't lose. He just never loses. I'm sorry. And look, that's not a cut. I'm, I'm glad you're laughing with me because I'm laughing myself because I'm going, come on, come on, uh, 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 Lance, that it's going to be very difficult to stop it. They want out of there, and uh, I just think they won't. But anyway, that's, we'll see. I, I ho- hey, I hope you're right. Uh, one cent sales tax comes off the books a little bit over a year. And I'm, I'm just hoping we're going to stand tall. What's going to happen with this? Because, see, that was the problem with putting it on the first place. Right. They got a temporary sales tax. They want the income tax. They want middle class and upper to pay a heavier tax. John Bell has to get this thing off for reelection. I think he gets beat either way. But my point being is, what are we going to do? Because they're coming hard again. They're coming hard. We got to have this money. Well, hell, we just put it on there. We added a billion dollars or eight hundred million or whatever it is to the budget by putting this on there. So what? What's what's going to happen here? And do you will you have the votes to fight him off of that? Well, right now I can tell you, uh, we polled the delegation every week, just about uh, or talk to people every week, and and about a one cent this, one cent that. As we were going through, absolutely not. Nobody is interested in renewing that penny. Okay, but uh, but they're gonna be. Crying. Let me just you know they're gonna be crying. Oh, well, we go, what are we gonna do now? We gotta cut everything. That's what they're gonna do, and here come everybody again. Well, it's gonna be a, a discussion at that time. I think the the uh, the special session will probably be called in either January or February. But remember this: <clears throat> it's only a ten day, or however how long. It's not long enough for a whole lot of discussion on tax reform or anything like that so i'm not sure where it's going and 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 that's what concerned me yesterday and i talked to some folks on the floor it didn't really concern me but that's one of the things that that you can eye on this whole budget debate <clears throat> excuse me that that final version of hb1 got 56 votes it takes 70 votes to get a tax so uh oh so they got to buy a few more republicans they're gonna have a few more republicans a bunch and 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 a bunch of conservatives have to have to have to turn so uh it's going to be a difficult session whenever he calls it or however he calls it hopefully what i hope i would love to see louisiana's economy go uh gangbusters and we don't have any mid-year cuts and we don't have to worry about the fiscal cliff but chances are that's not going to happen i don't don't say it happening either we're struggling big time right now uh well, I, I, and, and by the way, I agree with that, but but is there a chance that you renew the sales tax? I think is there, there a is chance, a chance that you renew the sales tax, but maybe only half of it? I mean, what's... I, I think there's a chance. I, if, if I was, and my crystal ball has been kind of murky here lately. But... By, by the way, yesterday I dropped mine on the concrete when I was walking <laughs> to the truck. That's going to explode it, man. I don't have one anymore after yesterday. Right, and I'm not advocating this. I'm just saying what what I I see probably happening in that special session would be a combination of cleaning pennies, what we call taking away exemptions and and stuff uh, on your your existing four cents, yeah, and then maybe keeping a half cent or something. I bet that discussion comes up, or maybe even a whole cent. You know, I'm sure some people are going to shoot higher than others. Uh, the fact remains that we could have solved half that fiscal cliff. Had we had a standstill budget or get one out this year, yeah, I just I just get very concerned because 
I see us I see the fight. I see the fight, but never enough to make the difference. Now you said there'll be some differences made. You already saw with the when you win New Orleans, but uh, I want to win. I want to still. You know why? Because I think if y'all win, the state wins. The people win. The taxpayers win. Every well, time they win, nothing changes. Let me ask you a question. So they got their three hundred million dollars. Let's say everything stays the same. You're hoping something will change, and I, I appreciate your hope. By the way, if you ain't got hope, you ain't got anything. But three hundred million more dollars that they're going to spend uh, in the budget. Here's my question to you. You know the budget like the back of your hand. You know state government because you've been doing it a while. Can you name one change with the budget passing that the government, the state government, led by the governor and and Dorn and them, is going to change to make our state better? Like, are we doing something with unaccrued liability or fixing roads? Are we doing something with the budget? Are we we, we changing the way we spend money in health care? Are we changing the way we spend money in in uh, corrections, we ch- tell me what changed with this new budget vote. Anything changed? I, I think it's uh, personally. I think it's the same old, same old. Same old, same. Old. Nothing changed. <clears throat> right. That's right. Okay. I do believe it's the same old, same old, and and that we haven't gotten the the uh, structural changes that we need. Look, we sent over some good bills to the Senate to how to uh, redo the uh, capital improvement process. You know, HB two. And look, Moon, I don't know if the public caught this or not in debate about HB2 yesterday, the Senate. When we sent HB2 over to the Senate, they added $340 million in new projects. My God. And that got off the floor yesterday. I voted against it. I voted against HB3. $340 million new projects. Where did you get that money from? That it's not going to materialize. We're bonding capacity. They're going to go home to their, their constituents and say, look at this project I got into HB2. That's never going to happen. And it, it and it just baffles me that we we do business that way. So we sent over uh, Representative Devillier out of uh, Unis area had an excellent uh, deal that would reform that process, but it got didn't even get heard in the Senate. So we have a lot of work to do on that. And 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 to your point, we're doing the same old same old okay, right now. But look, please. when the smoke clears, if this was a battle. And I told somebody this yesterday. When the smoke clears off the battlefield, there's dead bodies on both sides about the same amount. This is the first skirmish. We <clears throat> we have, uh, you know, I think we did a, a pretty damn good. This is our first skirmish. And when the big battle comes at the state of Louisiana and our constituents will be vocal and start hitting and hitting hard, we're going to win this thing. Yeah, the uh, I, I'm really interested in what's going to happen first of the year with the special session in this penny. Uh you made my point, though. Nothing's changed. We got all the people in the press beating y'all up, beating the hell out of y'all. We got people in government and these representatives, Karen F. Carter bar, uh, Peterson, throwing F bombs at y'all. I mean, that was classy, by the way. And, <laughs> and, and, I mean, really a classy woman. We got all this stuff going on over and over and over again, blaming y'all. By the way, Jim, they did nothing but blame y'all. You know what Jim Beam's headline was today? GOP blame game is high gear. They've been blaming y'all for everything. They turn around and say, y'all, y'all doing the blame game. It's amazing. Who, so who blamed anybody on, on – uh, I hadn't heard Taylor Barra get up there and blame anybody. Or, rep- that's what I'm saying. They, uh, yeah. write, they write headlines. They, they're officials, and they're not even watching the game. They're officials, and they're calling what they want to call. You know, you, you, you double dribble and kick it off your knee out of bounds, and they call it uh, – uh, you tried to kick the ball at Edwards. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. just something like that, you know. And so I got a kick out of the ignorance of the headline. GOP blame game in high gear. Y'all ain't blamed anybody. But they constantly blame y'all. And and Karen Carter-Peterson throwing the F-bomb. I mean, come on. But they haven't changed one thing. Yet the press has told us if they go with y'all budget, y'all a bunch of obstructionists. But if we go with their budget, which is the Senate budget for the 10th year, nothing changed. Amazing. Amazing. That's right. Well, we've got we still got some days left in this special session. We'll see what happens, but I tell you, the state of Louisiana has to get engaged. Our voters have to get engaged. That's why we ended up with uh, John Bell Edwards as the governor. And in my own district, only forty two percent of the Republicans showed up to vote. And and the conservatives stayed home. And I, and I have a saying in life: life doesn't give you what you deserve. Doesn't give you what you want. Life doesn't give you what you want. It gives you what you deserve. Yeah. And the state of Louisiana is getting what they deserve in this kind of stuff because they're not getting out and pushing the button on that voting machine and not letting their voices be heard. Yeah. If we were a blue state 
If we wanted to be California, there would be 61 Democrats in that House and 40 Republicans. But, but you know what, though? That. that we vote like a blue state to keep doing the same thing over and over again. That Absolutely, because we get away with it. And the, the voters in Louisiana ought to hold us all, all of our feet. Yeah, Lance, Lance, I got to go. God bless. Thank you, brother.